Good morning, you all. Um, my name is Moisés. I'm a software developer from Brazil. Last year, I relocated to Czech Republic to work at Red Hat, and I've been toying with configuration files through the last year, basically. So I took what I have learned last year and what I've been toying with to show it to you. So configuration, it's kind of what we need to do to our software so it can behave like differently. We don't need always like a hello world that will execute it and it will always print hello world. In different situations, we might need our software or service to behave uh, in a different way. So that's why we need to provide configuration to our software. In the beginning, like we are used to like uh, read values and output values from when we start learning how to program. So basically, we toy with uh, the standard input and standard output. So we can, through the standard input, provide some information and control the, the behavior of the software. But as a service, we might need it to like get that configuration before. We also have the standard error, like a different way out to print stuff, to return to the console. And then the first thing we have to toy with configuration in our um, applications is the command line arguments. So in Python, we have argparse, which is um, included in the standard library. And you can do an arg parse. You basically have to define your parser. So I can define my program here to process some integers. Uh, I'm adding one argument called uh, integers, which I can call it uh, n later. And the type is int, and I'm, I can have more than one number provided. A hyperstring, like uh, integer for the accumulator, and another argument minus minus sum, which is uh, the destination is this accumulate, and the action, I will store this function sum. But its default value is max. So I have a program that process some integers here. And it should sum these integers if I provide minus minus sum. Otherwise, it just find the maximum number. So I can parse my args. This will process all the args I've provided to the command line. And I can just print here args dot accumulate, which is with my HP uh, the max function or the sum function. And I will accumulate the integers past here. So I will get um, the list of numbers as I have a plus arg here. So I'm in my console. I can type minus h in my program, and I will get usage of my program. I have a minus h for this helper. I have a minus minus sum, which is optional. And I have n or more for uh, my numbers. It processes some integers. Um, n is a positional argument, which means like it has a specific place to be in the command line. To be processed uh, is expected. And the optional arguments they have, I have here the, the helper, and also the minus minus sum, which is to change the behavior of our software. So it normally finds me the, the biggest number, but if I want to change this behavior to sum all the numbers, then I provide a minus minus sum, and it will behave differently for me. So if I call my program with one, two, three, four, it will find me the biggest one, the four. But if I provide a minus minus sum, then I get a 10, which is the sum from 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if I try uh, different values, which are not numbers, it crashes and says, like, yeah, um, the usage of the program, you're not using it right. Uh, the argument n is a type of int, so a is not an int. Then you get, like, type checks on your uh, on your arguments. So we've seen uh, how to use arguments in the command line to change the behavior of a software. 
And arc parse, it provides us with uh, the command line arguments and very nice flexibility on those and also type checking so far. Another way to change the behavior of code, of software, is through environment variables. And in Python, we can use OS environment. So, basically what I have to do is import OS and call uh, os.environment, let's say home, and it will print my, my home folder. Or I can try to print uh, my homebrew GitHub API token, and it doesn't show up because the Unicode I put there didn't get to the PDF, sorry. Uh, it was a winky, not my token, actually. So it's nice to, to grab information out of the environment, but sometimes we might be exposing uh, some information that is kind of sensitive, and we have to be careful about that. And what is in our, in our environment can also be accessed, uh, depending on how we put that value in environment variables, it might be accessed by other uh, applications. The third type is through configuration files. It's nice to have the flexibility to use uh, the command line so you can like uh, very fast change how you, you're using some software and then sometimes when you're in the development process, you're not yet have your configuration fixed. So you kind of toy in and then you're always changing, need a specific behavior. So you're not using it all the same. But sometimes configuration files, they can have all that specific configuration that we know that we need for a specific case and it's not going to change. Sometimes in the command line, we do some typos and then have to call the command again. And with config files, you have all your configuration set and you know that it works and it will not break when you try, try to run it. So Python gives us config parser. And this is an example configuration file. I have, uh, it is uh, in the INI format. It's composed by sessions. So I have a session called default and I have another session called Bitbucket and uh, top secret server. These values in the default session, they are shared with the other sessions. So if I try to access a uh, bitbook.org um, compression, it will, if it doesn't exist here, it will fall back to the default group. So to use config parser, I have to load the file. So I create my config parser, and then I feed it with my INI file with the configuration. So now I can access, I can see the sections. So I had two sections other than the default one. And for, if I try to see config, uh, Bitbucket user, it will get me the user. And config uh, default compression, what is in the default. But I can also try to see what is in config uh, Bitbucket, like everything. So if I do this, it will, I will see that it merges what is stored in Bitbucket, but also what was stored in the default group. Um, and then if I try, yeah, then I can also get things from the top secret server, which uh, he had this option to know, but this one comes from the default. It could get a no from the default, if it, a yes from the default it did, if it, it wasn't not there. But then as it uh, subscribed uh, <clears throat> the value, then we can have it different here. Well, in the arg parse, I had my parser and I could just like dot and the name of the, the argument I was expecting. And with config parse, I had kind of like a dict. So I had all to be like brackets and quotes and everything. And so basically, uh, what I brought today to show it is a mix of arguments, environment, and config. But I still have some other 
stuff to mention about like you can always have inputs as signals to your uh, software. This is not covered by um, the Oslo config, which I'm using, but this is another way how you can interact with your software or application. Um, and always you can also like as an output, you can have an exit code so you can pipe, um, so you can create scripts with your software and see what it is like if it runs okay or not. So basically, this is all the in input you can get, um, and this is basically the output you can use. Of course, that might be like you can interact with other ways like networking, but this is kind of the basics. If I had this like in my first semester or first year, I would be like very glad with my professor. So, in the last year at OpenStack, uh, I was working. In, in a, I've been working in, in a project called Oslo config, which handles configuration files. And the Oslo is a project inside OpenStack, which means OpenStack common libraries. So you don't actually need to be running OpenStack to use these guys. They are kind of like built uh, with just, just over Python itself, and then it doesn't have dependencies to other OpenStack projects. So Oslo config at the beginning it's a it works with configuration files, but also you can have uh, arguments which will um, have priority over the configuration files. So you can have your config in the configuration files, and if you need any change, then you can just overload them with the arguments. And also in the last semester uh, of last year. There was, it was merged a driver, so now we can also get uh, values from the environment. So we have the configuration files, and they can be um, subscribed, uh, overloaded by environment variables, or and then you can provide uh, arguments on the command line, and much more. Like we have these new drivers in Oslo config, so you can create your own driver to how you, you, you can fetch configuration uh, data. Lately, um, I've been working on two drivers, one driver to fetch configuration data uh, through the network. So you can have in your configuration file um, keys to a server, so you can have a HTTPS connection to the server, so you can fetch the configuration and then use that configuration. The, the second driver I was working in, it, it's a Castellan driver for uh, this Castellan library in, also in OpenStack Oslo. And using it, you can store configuration data in, let's say, HashCorp Vault or Barbican, which is a, a secret manager for OpenStack. In Oslo config, we have like the basic types, strings, uh, booleans, integers, floats, lists, and dicts. So we can do the, the same type checks that arc parse does. So then we have this that is now extensible as well to the, to the configuration files. As config parser, it only gives me a dictionary. It doesn't do any validation on the types. Also uh, very common in OpenStack are like the networking types. So we have uh, also validations to, to this kind of data. And now I'll show an example. So from Oslo config, I'm importing my config module. And I have um, some common options and the greeting options. So in my example, I will build a uh, hello world, but it will be configurable in different ways. So I have the name, which is the name to greet. The default is world, so it will print uh, hello world for me at first. And the greetings, um, the default one is hello, is the greeting to be used. I can just say like, can change the greeting to hi and say hi world. Or I can change to another language. 
And also I add another option here like times, so how many times I will re repeat the greeting. So if I say like um, times equal five, it will say like hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. In my main function, I create my config object. And then here I can also have some kind of control. Uh, I'm registering as a CLI option my common ops, so which is the name to be greeted. Here I'm regist registering uh, the greetings options, uh, which was the, the hello, the, the greeting, and then the times. Here I'm registering them differently, but I could just pass the the whole list here with like hashes register opts with an S in the end, like here. The difference is like this one I'm exposing to the command line. And this one, it can only be, uh, be fed by either uh, environment variables and the configuration file. So this one will not be exposed as a command line option. Oh. Then, here I have uh, for E in range times just to say like hello world world many times. So I'm getting uh, the times config and then I'll print formatting the greeting and, and the name capitalized and just my main boilerplate here. So here I have the helper. So Oslo config also provides me with the helper. So I get the usage of my program. I have all the, the like positional arguments, optional arguments and the greeting options, which was in a section. So it will expose me greeting times, but I didn't expose the, the, the greeting itself to be used. You can provide here a configuration file, a path to a configuration file to run your, your, your software, your program, and, or else uh, a folder, and then it will read all the configuration files inside that folder. It also has uh, default paths where it will look for the configuration files if you don't provide them through the command line. So here I have my hello world, basically, and it will print me, yeah, hello world. It's like his um, basic behavior. But I can change it through the command line, passing a name to be greeted. And then I have Hello Brussels. So I was able to change the behavior of the program using the command line. I can use the minus three argument and it will print Hello Brussels three times. And then I have this configuration file, which in the default section I have the name Brussels still. And the greeting now I'm changing to uh, Hello. And three times. So now if I call um, my program passing uh, dash dash config file, my configuration file, it will now behave as what I told it to behave in the configuration file. So now I don't have to, if I put like this file in like let's say slash etc uh, slash uh, hello, it would read it automatically. But also I can have the configuration file and still change um, it using the command line. So the command line will take precedence and I will have both the configuration coming from the coming from the configuration file and the behavior coming from the command line. Both the, the, the times, how many times to greet and the name to be greeted. So this way you can fine tune your configuration. Uh, let's say you want to build uh, a container with your application, but you don't want to put um, your configuration file inside a container. So you could just uh, um, either run the container and mount the, the configuration file. You could uh, run the container and load the configuration um, using environment variables. 
You could use a driver to fetch a configuration file from a remote server. You could use a driver to to load uh, sensitive configuration files like creden database credentials, API tokens, to fetch them from services like uh, from HashiCorp Vault or other secret managers. And then you can also write your own driver to fetch uh, configuration the way you want. And that was it. I'm open for questions now. You can find uh, the slides here. Thank you all. <laughs> Questions? OK. Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> I still can't hear you. <laughs> You can come. <laughs> oh, you're asking if, if I can use YAML or JSON. Well, uh, not yet. I heard some, some rumors on that on the IRC channel. Uh, we are on free node. You can go there, uh, hang out with us. And, but it's doable. Right now, we like load a file and then feed it to uh, any, any parser to kind of mount some dictionary structure. So if you can replace that class and then provide uh, a JSON reader or a YAML reader, and then you can do that. You can read the configuration out of like any other format. Next question. Okay. Uh, can you specify in your config file that certain options cannot be overloaded from the command line? Okay. Um, the question is, if I can specify in my configuration file if, the, if some specific option cannot be overloaded. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, so far, what I've seen is that when you're doing the coding, you specify where, uh, if you're reading, if you're exposing it to the command lines or not. So I, n I don't know if you can like then go to the configuration and shut that down. Yeah, basically, when you're registering your option, you either register it just to the, to the configuration file or to the configuration file and also the, the command line, depending on which the way you register the, uh, the option. Next question? Okay. Oh, okay. The environment variables. It works like magic. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Like uh, it will fetch the, it will try to fetch the value from the environment after um, kind of going to the to the configuration file. So first, it checks the the the, the command line if it's registered to the command line, and then we have a specific naming. So it was quite it's quite new the driver to fetch variables for the for the environment. But right now we have some prefix to the environment variable that you can fetch it from there. If you go into the documentation, you will find that information. Or you can just email me and I'll, I'll point you to it. I haven't toyed with uh, the environment variables that much, so I wasn't able to, to put it on the slides yet. Thanks. Next one? OK. Sorry? Oh, okay. I was indexing them. Yeah. I can, you can provide the whole list if the method. Uh, 
see. Um, okay, the question is, if I can here, because I, I saw like greetings option zero and then greetings option one, I can provide a whole list. Like here I'm providing a list and then it is like opts in the plural. So, but I can, uh, I can also register just a single option. I, I could just provide a list. The thing is like, I'm, this one I'm registering just to the configuration file, but this one I'm exposing it to the CLI option. It was just uh, another way I was trying to show how you can use it. And this is kind of the section it is in. So if I go back to the configuration file, Oh no, it, it's here. Like, this is my, uh, what I'm trying to access. This is the, the zero, this is the configuration zero, and this is the configuration one. This is the, the guy I'm accessing, like right here. So basically, this configuration file will be like this in the greeting in the session. Okay, uh, time's up. You can either talk to me outside if you have more questions or uh, contact me with my email or anything else. Okay, thank you. Thank you all.